When it comes to the best investment management businesses globally, BlackRock is at the top of every list. There's a great possibility you're unaware of it, since it's not well recognized outside of the financial community. So the big question is this, why is BlackRock referred to be a corporation that controls the world, despite its lack of popularity? Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel, the place for people looking to become financially smarter every week. Our goal is to explore the future of business and help you become a better investor. If you like our content, please give us a like and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss our new videos. BlackRock, the world's biggest investment manager, has emerged as a key Wall Street player in Washington, D.C., serving as a symbol of the revolving door between money and politics. In this video, we'll be sharing with you a quick rundown of facts to know about the firm. Number 1. They manage a lot of assets. We mean a lot. Currently, the company manages a total of $9.5 trillion in assets. Except for the United States and China, this is greater than the gross domestic product of every nation on the planet. However, this sum does not belong to them. Rather, it represents the assets that they manage on behalf of their customers, particularly pension funds of ordinary people like police officers, nurses, teachers, and others, such as cash, fixed income, equities, alternatives, real estate, and so on. Almost 60% of their total managed assets are for institutional investors, mostly products tied to stock markets. Number 2. Many former government officials have been recruited into key positions at BlackRock. Dees and Adeyemo had previously worked for the government by the time they worked at BlackRock. Dees previously served as a senior advisor to President Barack Obama and as a deputy director of the National Economic Council, which he will now oversee under Biden. Adeyemo, nominated as Biden's deputy treasury secretary, previously worked as Obama's senior international economics advisor. One of his responsibilities while at BlackRock was to serve as Fink's acting chief of staff. Before joining the asset giant, Pyle, who has served as BlackRock's global top investment strategist, had previously worked in Obama's administration. He served as the president's special assistant for economic policy and worked in the Treasury Department and the Office of Management and Budget. Thomas Donnellan, who currently serves as chairman of the Assets Manager Research Department, formerly served as Obama's national security advisor. BlackRock has hired other former policymakers and regulators. Dahlia Blas, a long-serving former Securities and Exchange Commission official who most recently led the SEC's Investment Management Division, joined the business as Director of External Relations. According to BlackRock, Blast now supervises the firm's Global Public Policy Group, Social Impact, and Corporate Sustainability teams, as well as a new organization founded to explore stakeholder capitalism. Corian Stephenson joined BlackRock's Financial Markets Advisory, or FMA branch, in 2016, having previously worked on bank supervision concerns at the Federal Reserve Board and held top roles at the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. Number 3. They have an interesting startup story. In 1988, eight colleagues with expertise in mortgage-backed investments, Larry Fink, Susan Wagner, Robert S. Capito, Barbara Novick, Ralph Klostein, U. R. Freighter, Ben Gullub, and Keith Anderson founded BlackRock in a single room. They were able to manage assets that were beneficial to customers, thanks to a $5 million bank loan. One of his first customers was the FDIC. Until SNL Settlement Trust Organization was established, the industry was on the verge of collapse owing to several catastrophic judgments made by SNL. After the government seized control, the FDIC hired Fink's BlackRock to monitor SNL's holdings. BlackRock, on the other hand, was working on the Fink version technology. The tech's name was Aladdin. By 1991, BlackRock's AUM has reached $9 billion. In 1992, they have $17 billion. And in 1994, they had $53 billion. Peabody, a Kindler, went bankrupt the next year. GE, 
which owns Peabody, asked Fink to help liquidate Kindler's $7 billion mortgage-backed securities portfolio. PNC Financial Services Group purchased a stake in BlackRock Financial Management for $240 million in 1995. Some claimed that the move was unnecessary since BlackRock was only providing a portion of its business. On the other hand, Fink was fully aware that he was about to embark on an arduous climb. BlackRock was poised to rewrite the rules with the upcoming offer. The connection with PNC provided BlackRock with a steady supply of retail customers to supplement its institutional clientele, which accounted for around 80% of its AUM in the 1990s. Number 4. They had a terrible IPO With a well-balanced portfolio, BlackRock became a publicly listed firm in 1999. People, however, remained skeptical of their latest technology. BlackRock had the worst IPO of the month. With time, the market learned that BlackRock was honoring its promises to investors, despite having the cheapest shares. Fink chose to rely on the strength of acquisitions after 16 years of consistent development. Before the end of the year, BlackRock had operations in Sydney, Singapore, London, and Munich. In 2008, Fink was on the flight to Singapore. Back home, Lehman Brothers had declared bankruptcy. Fink returned to the United States the following day. The financial sector had changed and was now in jeopardy. He called politicians and warned them that they had to do something before things get worse. During the 2008 economic meltdown, the Federal Reserve Board of New York appointed Fink to monitor a $30 billion portfolio of Bear Stearns assets and Aladdin was utilized by investors, banks, and the treasury. When the market was collapsing, Aladdin was on the rise and continued to flourish by recruiting new customers, becoming the go-to spot during economic downturns. Fink had come to rescue the nation from financial ruin. Following this, the buying frenzy persisted. In 2009, BlackRock paid $1.3 billion for Efront, and in 2009, it paid $13.5 billion for Barclays Global Investors. As a consequence of this transaction, BlackRock rose to the top of the asset management industry in the United States. Fink quickly saw the benefits of technology when applied effectively. He was named one of the best CEOs for 14 years in a row. Today, a guy who was once dismissed has risen to become the most influential person in finance. Number 5. BlackRock's Aladdin BlackRock unveiled a risk evaluation and risk management system comprised of 5,000 computers that operate 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, and are overseen by a team of engineers, mathematicians, and developers. The BlackRock program could follow millions of daily transactions and evaluate each asset in its customers' stock holdings to see how even minor economic changes may impact them. The system is known as Aladdin. It was actively monitoring the markets for anything that may go wrong, and it would serve as the foundation for a second organization that would broaden BlackRock's reach beyond asset management and into customer counseling. Aladdin presently has a total of $20.6 trillion in assets under management. Number 6. Clients benefit from them in various ways. Its brand and reputation with the firm establishing itself as one of the nation's top asset management and financial advising organizations with superb credibility for providing excellent solutions and continuous profits to its customers. Its service line consists of single and multi-asset class pools that trade stocks, fixed income, options, and money market instruments. Its worldwide influence, with the firm operating a global network of offices that assist individuals in over 100 countries throughout America. APAC, or Asia-Pacific Accreditation Cooperation, Europe, the Middle East, and Africa. Its accessibility, which is supported by multiple internet portals, such as its virtual BlackRock Solutions portal. Its sector competence, which is achieved through the firm's hiring of highly trained skilled money managers and other specialty finance experts, all whom are overseen by a group of industry experts. Number 7. They're partners with a lot of big names in the business. BlackRock interacts with several affiliate corporations to provide competent financial advice to its worldwide clients. 
These partners are classified using the following sets. Supplier and vendor partners, which comprise suppliers of different activities, goods, and systems that support the firm's primary investment operations, as well as organizations to whom critical quasi-tasks may be outsourced. Channel and distribution partners, which are the firm's chain of intermediaries such as banks, wealth managers, health insurers, and trust entities who offer a variety of programs and options on the firm's behalf. Social and community allies, which include some nonprofits and philanthropic NGOs, with which the firm works on community initiatives all over the world. Tech experts, who include a number of technology, software, hardware, and integration affiliates who help the firm establish and manage robust IT systems and collaborate on diverse tech products and tactical and allied members, which include market-leading firms on a variety of sectors that collaborate with the firm on promotional initiatives. BlackRock has developed many strategic collaborations. Among the collaborations are a distribution agreement with Artivest to provide more exposure and faster access to its investable methods, a technology agreement with Hazeltree Liquidity Web to automate cash flows, and a trading alliance with Fidelity Investments. Overall, BlackRock has grown from a modest company to a multinational behemoth. This global giant invests in research and development in many fields, and as a consequence, it holds shares and voting rights in some of Europe's top companies, including those in energy, oil and gas, and of course, banking. In addition to being a bondholder, the company invests in the government and central banks, issues public bonds, owns real estate, and acts as an auditor and mentor. Yup, BlackRock has developed so effectively and is so reliable that the government sometimes begs its aid. If that isn't the definition of success, we don't know what is. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, we got a lot more in store for you. Don't forget to give us a like, subscribe to our channel, and click the notification bell so you'll be updated in our future videos. I'll see you next time.